I'm Dan from the National Science Olympiad office, and welcome to another month of my SO. This month, we'll be focusing on forensic science and the crime busters and forensic events. These two events have a lot of similarities. In both the middle school and high school divisions, competitors will need to prepare to use qualitative analysis to identify unknown substances. They will need to be able to identify things like hair, fibers, and plastics. Students will analyze physical evidence from an imaginary crime scene and then put all that information together to determine what happened and who the evidence implicates in the crime. TV shows and movies based on crime scene investigations can be fascinating to watch for the drama and the surprise endings. But as any Science Olympiad participant knows, the real lab work that goes into those discoveries isn't quite as easy as they make it look. So if you're competing in crime busters or forensics, how should you prepare to figure out what you're looking at and make some decisions in only 50 minutes? The first step is learning about all the substances and items listed in the rules manual that you might have to identify. What makes those things unique? What do they react with? What do they look like under a microscope? And do they look like anything else? You should take notes and start thinking about what you want to include in your one sheet of notes that you can take to the tournament. And then you need to practice, practice, practice. You should assemble all the lab equipment you'll need and work with your partner to get really good and fast at all of the lab skills. Make sure you're practicing using all of the safety equipment you'll use in the real competition, like your goggles, lab coats, and appropriate footwear so you can get comfortable and stay safe. Figure out with your partner who will do what in the competition. Is one of you better at using the microscope? Is one of you better at qualitative analysis? You should divide the work so you can be efficient at the lab practice. And don't forget to leave enough time for the crime scene analysis. Lastly, you'll work on creating your double-sided sheet of notes that you'll take into the testing room with you. Don't include information that you've already learned. Keep that space for things that you can't memorize or are new. One of the biggest challenges that students in lab events face is managing their time, which is why practice and working efficiently with your lab partner is so important. Now let's hear from some students who competed in Crime Busters from Stolar Middle School and they were the second place competitors at the 2022 National Tournament. Later, we'll hear from Haiti Lara, who was a Science Olympiad participant in high school and now works for the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation. Can you please introduce yourselves with your first name, school, and the Science Olympiad events you compete in? Hi, my name is Joseph and I go to Stoller Middle School. My events for uh, Science Olympiad are Disease Detectives, Crime Busters, and Storm the Castle. My name is Shreya. I go to Stoller Middle School. My events this year are Crave the Wave, Code Busters, Crime Busters, and Can't Judge a Powder, all the C's. Why were you interested in competing in the Crime Busters event? Um, so when I was younger, I was an avid reader, and most of my favorite genres to read were like detective novels and crime novels. So when I got older, I got really interested into forensics and chemistry. And when our coach wanted us to pick our um, lab event, uh, I read through the descriptions of Crime Busters and I was like, hey, this one suits me really well. So I decided to pick it. I was looking through practice tests about Crime Busters so I could decide which events I wanted last year. And I'm continuing this event again. I saw all the crime scene evidence footprints, fingerprints, powders, liquids, hair, and fibers. And I just thought that this it was so interesting. And I really like looking at crimes because they can be interesting and funny. 
If you were giving advice to someone who is new to the Crime Busters event and they don't know where to start in their preparation, what would you say to them? First of all, the internet is really helpful as a resource. Example, um, the Sayali website, it has some great like basic starting materials. Second of all, there are some starter kits um, on the official Science Olympiad website. Um, I forgot what it was called, but it was also really helpful when we first started. So it gave us like a bit of a deeper basic understanding of things. Second, don't be afraid to reach out to like um, scientists in your area or any universities. Example, I reached out to um, the Providence Medical Center on how to run gel electrophoresis, and they were nice enough to send um, me a video of like how to make the gel and how to run the electrophoresis. And third, every time you do an invitational, look through like all the answers you didn't know how to do. Um, again, if it's better if like right after you take it, you can still know like which ones you didn't know how to do and then search them up. So next time you go across um, the question that or something related to the same topic, you will know how to do it. I would say that both the partners should originally get a basic idea of all the internal topics and then split it between the two partners and then get a deeper understanding and then take practice tests, which include invitationals and then supplement that with more studying. What is the most interesting thing you've learned while preparing for the Crime Busters event? I found that it's really interesting that iodine and vitamin C clear up when they're reacted with each other. And one time when I was practicing, I spilled some iodine on a white table. So if I didn't do something quickly, it would stain. So then I thought what I could do and then I realized I could use vitamin C and I put it over the iodine and then it just cleared up and now I didn't have any worries. So that was a nice example of how we can use Crime Busters in the real world. Hi, Haiti. Can you please introduce yourself briefly? Hi, um, my name is Haiti Lara. I was a Science Olympiad competitor back in high school. I graduated in 2008, so it's been a little bit. Um, my favorite events were designer jeans, food science and forensic science. And I am now working for the Bureau of Criminal Investigation, commonly known as BCI. And this is in Ohio. It's the forensic lab in the state of Ohio. Uh, and I work as a DNA analyst. That sounds like an interesting job. Where did you go to school and what did you study? I got bachelor's in science at the University of Indianapolis. I graduated in 2012 with a Bachelor of Science in Biology and a minor in Chemistry. I then got my Master's degree in Forensic Science from the University of Illinois at Chicago in 2013. What does your job look like on a typical day? So BCI works a little bit different than other forensic labs out there. Uh, we do what we call the team effort approach. Um, so each step of the process is done by different analysts. So one week I'll be just in charge of extracting, another week I'll be analyzing, uh, etc. But typically what happens is we received an item of evidence for a case. Um, I will look at this item and I will take samples for DNA. That means I am doing testing for biological fluids. Sometimes I don't do any testing and I just take my samples for touch DNA. We then extract that DNA, which means we purify it, we, we clean it, we remove it from the item of evidence, and we purify it so that we can run it to, uh, through the robot. Uh, that means that we're doing DNA amplification and DNA um, capillary electrophoresis so that we can get our electrophorograms and our data. So at the end, you get all of your data for that specific case, you analyze it, you look at it, and you can decide um, by looking at your data whether there is any DNA profiles that could be used um, for comparison purposes. And then you write your report. Uh, part of my job also includes sometimes testifying for court as an expert witness. So your typical day can run from just running the biology or just running the extraction process or just analyzing your data. And sometimes you are just in court testifying for um, for any sort of case that can come your way. What did you learn in Science Olympiad that you still use today? All of my learning skills from Science Olympiad. I promise you every single learning skill that I have is from Science Olympiad. Uh, we use flashcards, we use whiteboards. Those were so helpful all through my entire 
learning career as an undergrad and in, even in grad school. And then a big one was just focus on one specific topic at a time instead of just cramming, uh, instead of just reading everything like five times or six times. If anything, I would go through the information maybe twice. Um, but something that I learned in Science Olympiad was to just slowly go through the material so that you genuinely understand it instead of just memorizing stuff uh, and really understanding the details and then move forward from that. And those are skills that I still use today. Whenever we have new methods that we use at work, currently we are validating a new process. And in order to do that, you have to learn exactly what that robot is doing. And the, the best way to do that is to just slowly understand the information, not cram it, just genuinely take your time into understanding every piece of information. Do you have any advice for our current participants that you wanna share? Yes, um, when you're in college, use all of those professor hours. Um, it doesn't matter how many times you go, um, sometimes you may annoy them, sometimes you may not. Sometimes they actually enjoy it. I use every single professor hour that I had to just go and sit there and talk through um, problems. Another big one is to get involved as much as you can, especially if you're in STEM. It was so useful and amazing to me to be part of the lab uh, side of biology. So I was the lab assistant. And that just meant that I was like creating all of the cultures for like, you know, immunology or microbiology. But it was so useful to me because I got to know the professors at a different level. And it just gave me extra information that I was able to use. Um, another big one is to be a professor assistant, especially in the lab section part of it. It was just so nice to to just get that extra information and just practice like practicing by being an assistant was very, very helpful to me. <laughs>